Good evening, 7th graders. In Lesson 3-2, we're going to look at estimating decimal products and quotients. Tonight's lesson has two main objectives. First, you're going to be able to estimate products. And secondly, you will be able to estimate quotients. So, what we have here um, for this warm-up is a rounding. And this goes back to the last lesson we did where we had to round to the nearest whole number. That's what you're going to do for number one, two, three, and four here. You're going to round to the nearest whole. So for number one, we have 145 and 89 hundredths. Decide, should it be 145 or 146? Well, if you take a look, again, we could look at the number afterwards. It's an eight, so we'd round this up to 146. I want you to do the same to two, three, and four. And when you're done, come back, because this is really important for today's lesson. Go ahead and do those all right, so let's go ahead and check those answers. We have for number two, 199 and 27 hundredths. Well, that is closer to 199 instead of 200. Number three, we have 106 and 6 hundredths. Well, again, you could look afterwards. It's a zero, so it'll stay at 101. And then number four, we have 28 and 45 hundredths. Again, you could look at the number after the ones place. It's a four, so this would stay 28. All right, so let's look at today's lesson. And we're going to jump right into this. When we're estimating products or quotients, the main idea here is round to the nearest whole number. So you see right away how that warm-up helped. We have 6 and 43 hundredths. Well, again, this is closer to 6 because you can look at the 4 right after the 6. Ooh. And you can see it's a 4, 4 less you round down. And then we look here, 4 and 7 tenths. Well, that's closer to 5. Well, we have 6 times 5. Our answer is about 30. And again, I have that squiggly equal sign saying it's about. Go ahead and do problems B and C here. Estimate both of these. So for the first one, estimate 4 and 72 hundredths times 1 and 8 tenths. And for the second one, estimate 17 and 2 hundredths times 3 and 78 hundredths. Go ahead and do those, and when you're all done, come back and check them out. Go ahead and pause me. All right, so for this one, we have 4 and 72 hundredths. Well, this is closer to 5. And then 1 and 8 tenths, well, that's closer to 2. So we have 5 times 2, so our answer is about 10. For this one over here, we have 17 and 2 hundredths. Well, that 2 hundredths is much closer to 17. Then we're timesing it by 3 and 78 hundredths. Well, that would round up to 4. And if you multiply those out, we have 17 times 4. Well, 4 times 7 is 28. 4 times 1 is 4 plus 2 is 6. So our answer is about 68. So now we have a word problem of it. Joshua bought three yards of fabric to make a flag. The fabric cost $5.35 per yard. The clerk said his total was $14.95 before tax. Did the clerk make a mistake? Explain. So again, go ahead and do this one on your own. Uh, again, you're rounding here. So estimate the total. We know he bought three yards of fabric, and each yard costs $5.35. So figure out what you'd round that $5.35 to, and then go from there. Was the clerk making a mistake when he said the total was $14.95? Go ahead and work that out now. And when you're all done, let's see. All right, so let's check this one out. Well, we know he bought three yards of fabric, and it was $5.35 each. I'm going to round that $5.35 to $5, because it's close to 5. And I know he bought three yards, so generally... The least amount it would be is about $15. So now we look at the question. The clerk said his total was $14.95 before tax. Did the clerk make a mistake? Well, if we know the answer is about $15, and we round it down, because the fabric actually costs $5.35. So it's actually going to cost a little more than $15 for this fabric. So when the clerk said it cost $14.95, yes, that was a mistake. Um, the fabric costs at least $15. Because again, we just generally rounded. We rounded down. So $15 is the bottom of the cost. 
Now we're going to go look at estimating quotients. So we're done with the first half of the lesson. When we estimate quotients, what's really important are compatible numbers. Now these are numbers that are easily divisible. So they're numbers that go into each other evenly. There's no decimal, there's no fraction, there is no, no remainder. It goes in nice and easy. So for example, 20 divided by 4 are compatible. Those are compatible numbers because you get an answer 5. However, if I did 20 divided by 3, those are not because you really get 6 and really 1 third. 2 thirds, excuse me. There we go. So again, that will give you a fraction. So those are not compatible. So when we're estimating, it's not just about rounding to the nearest number anymore. Uh, what we end up having to do is make sure both numbers are compatible. So we have here 38 and 9 tenths divided by 1 and 79 hundredths. Well, if I were to round this up, I would get 39. All right? And then, well, if I rounded 1 and 79 hundredths up, I'd get 2. 39 divided by 2, those are not compatible numbers because, again, they don't go into each other evenly. You're going to have a remainder or a fraction. So we need to make something that works. So 38 and 9 tenths is also close to 38. I'd say it's closer to 38 than 40, so I would go with 38. And then I divide it by 2. Well, does 38 and 2 go into each other evenly? Are they compatible? And that answer is yes, because if you divide them out, you get the answer is about 19. All right, so here we have example three here. The cost to ship one yearbook is $3.12. The total cost for shipment was $62.40. Estimate how many books were in that shipment. So we know we're talking about books, and there were so many shipped. At this point, we don't know how many were shipped, but the total cost was $62.40, and the cost to do one yearbook is $3.12. Go ahead and divide those out using compatible numbers because, again, they're telling us to estimate. So you don't need the whole. And when you're all done, come back and check your answer. So go ahead and do that now. All right, so to answer this problem, we know that it's 62.40, and we'd end up dividing by $3.12 if we wanted the exact answer. But we don't want the exact. We want an estimate. So we're going to go ahead and round. Let's see. And 62.40? Well, let's see. I think we could round this to, well, I think 63 goes into it. So I'm going to do 63 divided by 3 because those are compatible numbers. All right, so if we do this, 63 divided by 3, that would be 21. And it's not dollars, it's bucks. There were about 21 books in that shipment. Now, instead, you might have chose to round down to uh, 60 instead. 60 divided by 3. And if you were to do that, you get 20 books. So as you can see, even if you round it down or if you round it up a little bit, they are pretty close. 20 or 21, generally that would be about what it would be. All right. So now we have these two problems. Again, I want you to estimate, hate, estimate using compatible numbers. And when you're all done, come back and check them. So go ahead and do the first one first, and then go ahead and do the second one. Go ahead and do those now. All right, so for this first one, I'd round 11 and 95 hundredths to 12. And then 2 and 1 tenth, I'd keep as 2. So our answer here, 12 divided by 2 is 6, so it's about 6. For the second one here, we have 82 and 52 hundredths. Well, if I were to round that out, let's see, I could try to do 82 divided by 4, but that wouldn't quite work. All right, so I need to figure out what should I round 82 and 52 hundredths to. And I think, again, this one, you could have had two different answers. I might have done 80. 80 divided by 4 is 20. So our answer is about 20. But some people might have said, well, this is about the same distance from 84. I know 84 divided by 4 works. 8 goes into 4 twice, or 4 goes into 8 twice, excuse me, so 21. So again, you get about 20 or 21. Either one of those work. You don't have to have both answers. I just wanted to show you how both of them give you about the same answer. All right, and then finally, last one for the night is 
Three and twenty-nine hundredths, a reasonable quotient for thirty-one and four hundred twenty-three thousandths, divided by five and ninety-four hundredths. So what they want us to do is divide these out and see, is this about a reasonable answer or is this pretty far off? So we need to divide those. Well, 31 and 423 thousandths, I'd round to 30. Because here we have 5 and 94 hundredths. Well, that's close to 6. And I know I can do 30 divided by 6. Those are compatible. And I get an answer of 5. So your answer should be about 5. So you look at this. Is that close enough to 3 and 29 hundredths? And in this case, I'd say no, because it would make sense if it was about 4.8, 4.9, something like that. But 3 and 29 hundredths is pretty far off when you're dividing. So no. All right, so that is your lesson tonight. Tonight we looked at how you can estimate decimals to find their <laughs> products and quotients. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.